God of War is an impressive franchise that I have been following since the very first game. But one question that I've had is what happened between the God of War universes? When Kratos ended everything with Greece, how did he get to the Norse area? Now this is a question that isn't really deep dived into in the video game, they kind of just gloss over it as he just showed up there. And based on today's comic book, I kind of believe that. But there is a comic book that came out from Dark Horse after the first game came out that kind of explains one of the things that Kratos is doing between the two major eras of the God of War franchise. So today we're going to bring you that. God of War, the comic book based on this new era of the God of War franchise. This is the Comic Story and Channel. I create audio dramas of comic books, which allows you to catch up on what is going on in the world of comic books, be it canon to a series like God of War or be it what's happening with Batman. The point of this is so that you know what's happening in the world of comic books, as many people don't know because they don't know to go to the local comic book store and see what is happening. So today let's dive into God of War issues 1 through 4 from Dark Horse. The world raged around him as Kratos lifted the blades of chaos in his hands. If I am cursed to a deathless misery, then at least I can rid myself of you. He shouts, hurling the blades into the frothing sea, and with that, he's turned away. He would rid himself of his past and his destiny, finding solitude in a darkened cave. But when he awoke the next morning, the darkness was pushed back by the flames of the blades of chaos. With an angry scowl, he took up the blades once more. He then found a boat and began to sail across the sea. And he once again threw the blades into the deepest part of the ocean. To the depths with you! He shouted. Eventually, he did find land and once again set out. Days would pass as he roamed through the mysterious land until he arrived at a stand of trees where he finally took a rest. But that's when he awoke to the blades of chaos waiting for him. Enough! Leave me alone! He shouted as he gripped the blades and threw them into the air, using his godly strength to heave them away. He would continue his wandering, finally finding a village. But as he approached, the villagers fled before him. He was confused, wondering why they would tremble at his sight. Because we've heard the stories, one calls out. And Kratos turns to see an old scribe walking towards him. And why should they not quake with fear at the approach of the ghost of Sparta? The scribe asks, smiling at Kratos. But that is because they do not yet understand what destiny lies in store for you here in the land of Pharaohs. Kratos glares at the man, telling him that he wants nothing to do with destiny. He pushes the man away, striding from the village. The old scribe reaches down for his fallen tablet. What is written will come to pass, and no god or man can stop it. He calls after Kratos. So Kratos continued, traveling the land, refusing to rest. Days slipped into weeks, weeks into months, and he would find himself at the edge of a lake, leaning down to drink, and a voice calls out to him. You look weary, Kratos. The voice tells him, and Kratos looks up to see a curious monkey watching him. The monkey speaks, telling him that no matter how much he runs, everything will serve its purpose. Kratos does not listen, continuing on. He camps one night, and even though he has fought it for so long, weariness finally overtakes him, his eyes drooping and closing. And as he opens them, the blades are there again waiting for him. No! He bellows in rage, getting up, screaming at the blades. Why won't you let me be? By what power do you return to my side again and again? When will my torments end? He bellows, and he turns, walking away. He continues onward, traveling the land, not allowing himself to rest, bringing pain when his body tries to succumb to weariness. And as he continues, a crane rears up from the grass, looking at him. What is written will come to pass. It is folly to resist destiny, the crane tells him. Kratos whirls on the bird. Please, please leave me alone. When will my suffering end? He demands of the bird, and the crane extends its wings, telling Kratos that he will find where he belongs at his journey's end. At these words, exhaustion overtakes Kratos, and he falls to the ground, and the crane flies overhead. Sleep well, Kratos. 
You will need all your strength to meet what lies in store for you. It calls. Kratos awakens in the darkness, getting to his feet, raging at the world around him. What is this? Who has brought me here? Show yourself! He bellows. You walk a long road only to return where you began, Athena tells him, and he whirls around accusing her of being the one returning the blades of chaos to him when he slept. We are not through yet, you and I. You must embrace your destiny and fulfill your purpose, she tells him. But Kratos wants none of it, damning his destiny. Why can't you leave me alone? He asks her, and her eyes glow as she stares at him. Return home, Kratos. Fulfill your purpose, she says. Kratos awakens once more, the blades of chaos waiting for him. He gets to his feet, aware that the old scribe is standing nearby. And in your dreams, did you find the answers that you seek, Ghost of Sparta? He asks, and Kratos stares down at the chaos blades. Only that I am damned, and this is my own personal hell. It is written that the hour you will be needed is fast approaching. You must take your blades in your hand and prepare yourself for the battle to come. Kratos takes the blades, throwing them into the lake, once again damning his destiny, and he sets off again. But one day, he looks to the horizon and sees the village that he first walked through. What? Have my steps brought me full circle? He wonders, and the people once again seem to run at his approach. But he realizes that it is not him that they fear. You there! What troubles you? He shouts at a passing man, and the people seem to see him for the first time. Oh, you have returned. Help us, please, they shout, gathering around him. What nonsense is this? Kratos demands as the people kneel before him, asking him to save them from the Chaos Beast. And they point to the river, where a massive crocodile monster has reared up and is attacking the people. It emerged from the river only moments ago. You've arrived just in time, they shouted him, telling him that they prayed to the gods and Kratos was sent. And Kratos sneers. Pray to the gods to save you from monsters. The gods are monsters, and monsters do not answer prayers. Perhaps you are the answer to their prayers, Kratos. The scribe calls to him. The long road you have walked brought you right where you are needed at the appointed hour. It is written. The scribe says as Kratos turns to look at him. The villagers are still pleading with him for help, but anger fills the Spartan. You are fools! Leave me alone! He shouts, throwing the villagers aside. But the scribe held his hand, reminding Kratos that he once wished for mercy for those that he had lost. Do you not extend the same to these unfortunate mortals? The scribe asks, and anger fills Kratos again. He roars with this anger, shouting to the world that he wants nothing to do with destiny and wants to be left alone. He turns to walk away from the approaching monster. Would you really let all of these innocents die just so you could delay what has already been written for a short while longer? I want to be left alone. That is all, he says over his shoulder. But when he looks back, the scribe is gone and the monster is approaching, roaring at Kratos. Go away and leave me to my misery, if you're even real. He says he is tired. He just wants this misery to end, and the monster roars again, anger filling Kratos again. Enough! If you will not leave me be, then you will pay. Come at me then! He bellows, leaping at the beast. He meets the chaos beast with several punches, knocking it around. He gets underneath it, slamming his fist into it hard. Stay down! He roars, but the creature swipes at him with its claws, knocking him away. Kratos flies through the air, bouncing along the ground, slamming into the wall. He gets to his feet, meeting the roaring monster with a double-fisted blow to the snout. Come at me then! He bellows, but the monster slams him with his claw, pinning him to the ground. He gets to his feet, meeting the roaring monster with a double-fisted blow to the snout. Come on then! He bellows, but the monster slams him with its claws, pinning him to the ground. He struggles to get up as the monster is closing its jaws around his head. No, damn you! He grabs those jaws, his muscles are bulging as he rips the head apart, killing the monster in a single blow. Breathing heavily, he struggles from beneath the corpse, staring at it for a moment before yelling in rage. Enough! He finally says, turning back to the village, where the villagers have begun to climb from the ruins of their homes. I killed the damn thing. You can stop trembling in fear now. 
Kratos tells them, but the villagers are pointing over his shoulder, and then they turn, beginning to run in fear. Fools! The monster is dead! He shouts to them, motioning to the corpse before him, but he turns to see the scribe standing next to him. Your purpose is not yet fulfilled, Kratos. There is work yet to be done, he says, looking at his tablet. But Kratos is tired of the scribe's riddles and demands to know what he needs. See for yourself. The scribe says as he points, and Kratos turns to see the waters of the river rising again, and from its depths comes a massive hippo, towering over the land. It is written that you will save the innocent from the mighty chaos beast. The hour has come for you to fulfill your destiny here. Kratos roars at the monster, demanding to know why his torment won't end. I do not care. Come for revenge for your fallen brethren, or simply make a meal of these fools. I want to be left alone, Kratos says as he turns away. The hippo roars at him, stomping forward, opening its massive jaws. I would just leave. I would just walk away. But you will not let me, Kratos says as he hangs his head, looking at the monster, readying his fist. So be it. He leaps forward, slamming his fist into the monster, but it doesn't even seem to feel the blow. It scarcely flinched, like shrugging off a gnat, Kratos says in surprise, and the hippo slams him with a massive foot, sending him flying through the air, slamming into the ground. Kratos struggles for a moment before slipping into darkness, and as he awakens, he finds himself in the dark realm again. He gets up, angry to see Athena once more, now joined by the crane god. You have fled from your responsibilities long enough, Kratos. You must fulfill your purpose. You must embrace destiny. She says, pointing to the blades of chaos, but Kratos still refuses, screaming into the darkness around him. Why must this curse dog my heels? He says, falling to his knees, and Athena stands over him. What you see as torment is in fact your great and terrible purpose. She tells him. Kratos finally gives up, damning the gods once more. He steps forward to the blades of chaos, reaching down for them. You see, Kratos, I knew you would listen to reason. So it is written, so it will be, the crane follows up. Come along then, Kratos says softly as he retrieves his blades. He awakens in a blazing rage, leaping to his feet, rushing at the hippo monster. He leaps at the beast, slashing it with the fiery chains of the blades of chaos, slashing through its flesh. The hippo tries to fight back, hitting Kratos and knocking him away, but he just roars as he lands. Kratos then turns to see the beast rushing towards him, but he leaps at it again, wrapping the chains around its leg, slashing through it, pulling the leg away. The monster roars, slamming into the ground, so he whirls the blades of chaos around his head, slashing through the monster's flesh. Stay down, damned beast! The blood begins to spill as Kratos is carving up the monster until there is nothing left. You have fulfilled your purpose, the scribe tells him as he steps forward. The sky darkened over his head. Good fortune as your path carries you away from me. I have the sense that you will need it. The scribe says as he walks away. Kratos curls up knowing that his journey hasn't ended. No, no, no! Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It really doesn't answer very many questions. It just kind of shows stories of what he was doing between the two games, which I guess means that he just wandered into the Norse era, which is kind of what they say in the game. He just kind of showed up there at one point. But it also shows us why he never got rid of the Blades of Chaos. He wasn't able to get rid of the Blades of Chaos. Now, whether or not this is officially canon or not, I'm not 100%. I believe it is. But if you want to see more stuff like this with Batman, Superman, you want to see Spider-Man, Wolverine, a lot of Deadpool, subscribe to this channel as we bring you comic book-themed content on a daily basis. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time right here.